Well, hey, Two Cities Church, Pastor Kyle here, and we are back in the book of Nehemiah. We've seen so much happen already in just the first two chapters. Uh, Early on, we saw that he was able to uh, take bad news, take it to the Lord. He he mourned, he had a heart funeral, he had complex grief, you know, he, he dealt with all that. Then he goes, he prays, he has a plan, he moves into place. Last week, we see that he ends up casting this incredibly compelling vision. Hey, let's rebuild the wall. And then we see that everybody responds, right? And it's easy in those moments, right, to say the right thing. Everybody goes, let's do this. But what happens in chapter 3, and this is where we're going to begin to look at today, is in chapter 3, people don't just have the right answer. Uh, They actually give the real answer. (laughs) It's not just the right answer, what, what they think he wants to hear. It's the real answer. It comes from deep within them. And therefore, they actually go forward and rebuild the wall. And what we're going to see is you turn to chapter 3, if you want to do that right now. In Nehemiah chapter 3, you have 38 different names of different people. Not only that, you have 40 different groups of people. 42, actually. Different groups of people. Here's the big first point, even before we jump into chapter 3 in verse 1. It takes all types of people Uh, to accomplish the mission of God. And whatever God wants to do, he wants to do through all of his people. Young, old, men, women. Uh, He he wants to use them. And so what we see here is all of God's people being used in chapter 3 to rebuild the wall. So here's what we see. Uh, Let's start out. Verse 1. Then Eliashib the high priest rose up with his brothers the priests and they built the sheep gate. Let me just Uh, say this, because we're going to jump around. It's it's 32 verses. It reads more like a genealogy. Uh, I'm going to just pick a few select verses and and talk to you about them. The first is this, that when something needs to be done, when a wall needs to be uh, rebuilt in your life or your family or your ministry, uh, you must lead in it. Uh, Leaders go first, and this is what we see here. They don't just point the way, they lead the way. They don't try to push and prod people. That's not how you lead them. They ultimately get out in front of them, and they say, look, follow me as I follow Christ in this area. What leaders do, especially in times of crisis and stress, is they get out in front of other people and they say, look, I'm going to give the most, I'm going to pray the most, I'm going to sacrifice the most, Um, I'm going to take the most risks in this situation, Uh, I'm, I'm going to deal with the opposition first, I'm going to get out ahead of all of it. And that's what they do. And then look where they start. Verse 1 says this, Then Eliashib the high priest rose up with his brothers the priest, and they built the sheep gate. Now, this is interesting. Uh, what, why the sheep gate? There's seven different gates mentioned in this, um, in this chapter and in that wall. The sheep gate was the gate where you took sacrifices through, where it was the gate closest to the temple, so it was where you would enter to worship. So the first priority, this should be, we see this rise right out of Scripture. This isn't my idea. This arises right out of Scripture that the first priority, the first gate you rebuild in your life is the gate of worship, is the gate of prayer, is the gate of devotion to the Lord. Uh, It's what Jesus says. If you seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, everything else will be added to you. So this is what happens. They say, here's the number one priority in my life, and and may it be the same with you. If I'm rebuilding the gates of my life before I I rebuild the financial gate (laughs) or before I rebuild the family gate, right? Or before I rebuild the business gate, whatever it is, uh, the first gate I'm going to rebuild is my upward vertical relationship with God. That's the first thing we see. Uh, And it goes on. I won't read all these to you. In verses two and three and four, we see lots of people working on lots of different gates. And then if you look at the end of verse five, and I'm just going to read this to you briefly, it talks about a lot of people building, but then it says this, uh, the the Tekoa Heights repaired, and that word by repaired means to strengthen uh, or to make firm. It says they repaired, but their nobles would not stoop to serve the Lord. Here's what it's saying. That the temptation in your life and my life sometimes is going to be too prideful to serve the Lord in a certain way. Uh, the Lord is going to call you to do things, to serve people, right? The, way, the main way you serve God is by serving people. And God's going to call you to serve people in a certain way that's going to require you to humble yourself. And what we see in this chapter, uh, praise, praise the Lord, most people are willing to serve the Lord in any way possible. But there are other people who say, I'm too prideful, I'm too good, I'm too above it, I won't do it. Uh, and this leads to, the, to one of the last things I want us to see. Verse 10, it says this. So we're kind of following this. It says, next to him was Jedediah. And, it, and he's another character mentioned in the story. It says this, he repaired the wall, verse 10, opposite his house. Let me encourage you with this. Where do you start repairing the wall? Wherever it's closest to where you live. Right? It's like, this is, this is what humility is. Humility is, I will work on myself first. I will work on my marriage first. Right? It's like, there's a lot of things that you and I are not going to be able to repair in this season. Right? Uh, you're not going to be, I don't think, uh, the one to find the uh, vaccination 
uh, for this global pandemic. You're not the one, I don't believe, I'm certainly not the one, that's going to be able to fix our global economy and, uh, and figure out all the details of the stock market. But here's what you can do, you can work on your budget. Here's what you can do, you can work on your health. Here's what you can do, you can work on your family. Here's what you can do, you can humbly work on your relationship with the Lord. What would it look like if everybody in our church, everybody who's watching this right now decided this, I'm going to have the character, I'm going to be humble enough to admit where the walls are broken down in my life. I'm gonna be that humble. And then not only that, I'm not just gonna be humble enough to notice that, I, I'm going to uh, take the time to work on rebuilding that section of the wall. And often I'm gonna do it quietly. I'm not gonna tell everybody. I'm not going to announce on social media. I'm going to humbly work on my relationship with God. I'm gonna build the sheep gate first. I'm not going to ask people to go where I'm not willing to go first. Because that's exactly what Jesus Christ does. He always goes out in front of us. He always says, follow me. And he always leads the way. Let me pray for us and let us be that type of church. Um, Lord, we just pray right now that you would give us the grace to get out ahead of the people that we're trying to lead. Whether that's we're leading a business and we need, to, we need to sacrifice most and get out ahead. Whether that's many husbands and fathers who are listening to this and they need to especially lead their families in this season. Lord, help us to see. Lord, give us the spiritual self-awareness to see where the walls are broken down in our lives. Lord, and help us by the grace of God to rebuild them. We ask this in your name. Amen.